I still feel me from Jada Kiss. And good evening. So the first time we get to say that here. For a special Saturday night broadcast. Getting you and yours ready for the upcoming football season. Preseason though it may be. I feel like every snap, including those that don't count, count. Last Sunday in a two-parter, uh, we discussed the AFC, in particular the Patriots and all they went through, and kind of sized up based on what the teams have lost and gained through trades and whatever, murder trials and drafts. Uh, from the last year until now, and how the divisions of the AFC will size up on to the senior circuit now. And uh, I want to start again, we have the information here off to the side with uh, we'll do the east. We're pretty sure it goes without saying that we cover the north last, is we want to have the most to say about but. We'll start with the East. Always an interesting division. And last year, uh, Philly flamed out at four and twelve. Dallas was eight and eight. Uh, uh, the Giants were nine and seven. And Washington was ten and six with their whole phenomenon with Robert Griffin the third. Uh, simple answer. There no tape. For RG3, though you see kind of what he can do at uh, Baylor, but they've got tape of him now. Um, real quick, uh, kind of a weird thing in sports, talking about Raleigh Cooper dropping an M-bomb. Uh, so weird. It's so weird. Would you rather have, you know, the 400 years of oppressing their people or be able to say, nigga, I don't know. I guess it really doesn't matter, but uh, kind of the same with Paula Dean. I would, well, no, it's not the same. I'd give Paula Dean a pass because she's from the South and, like I said, my wife, through, you know, whatever fall has been married to a black man her entire life, adult life. I know any white person on the planet that is not capable of doing it, and not even get a pass, because this she used to be able to say nigga whatever the hell she feel like, because she had to put up with her ex-husband, a cab and a car, whatever, and me. And we all know who I am. So, but it's not like that. It is here. Here and probably in these walls, you can say whatever the hell you want. And I wouldn't say do whatever you want, though, on the law around here, but you can say whatever the hell you want. Call me a nigga? Jack, fine. Most of my life I was one. And when I wasn't, I can't hurt me with it. So, whatever. Uh, I, so, it isn't the same as Paul Dean. He's kind of upset about it. Now, I've been that man been that bad, obviously, so, uh, on a human, at a, at a human element, I can understand it, but, hey, you know, if all else fell, you know, you could have, you could have came over there and kicked his ass, but, you know, I don't know, but I've been, uh, listening to the guys on Around the Horn and all through ESPN and alcohol, the liquid courage is kind of a motherfucker. So, you know, even though men alcohol, I can feel it in. It just seems embarrassing to me as a black man that we have to make anybody tiptoe around anything. We survived. Well, I didn't survive slavery. A lot of people survived slavery. Uh, and all that shit. So, you know, to make white people tiptoe around the world, why? When you never had to tiptoe before. You never had to tiptoe around anything. If you trample the tulips, and now they say you, you've got to walk around the tulips, 
We got walk through tubes. I don't walk around, you know, I walk through, I don't walk around the shed. Anywho. Six tenths of me say to give him a pass, but the other four tenths of me is going to move to, like, you know, jump on the dude, so, you know, what the hell. Back on the field, uh, let's see here. We'll do the, uh, additions and uh, subtractions. I know Riley Cooper's going now. Uh, let's see, Dallas, the Giants, for Well, they lost Dallas. We'll start Dallas. I'm pretty sure these are going to be alphabetical for the most part. Uh, they lost Phoenix Jones, who may not be shit, but could also be great. And no, they're still out on him. And drafted Travis Frederick, a center, 31st overall from Wisconsin. And that doesn't have eight mate written all over it, or worse. I don't know what that is. I am. Thoroughly biased. I, I stand the Cowboys uh, for the fact that I see so much of it around here. We're Sooners, we hate the University of Texas, but we love the Dallas Cowboys. And I know that's the only pro sport going. You can shoot down to Dallas, you know, spend a thousand bucks and have a great time down there. And there's Kansas City and yeah, maybe Houston if you're doing it for Denver. You know, but for the most part, and not just this region, Dallas is America's team. Maybe why I don't like them. Right? That's at least a good part of it. Um, so, losing an iffy running back and picking, drafting a center, you know, the center may pay off years down the road if you're still playing for him, but is he snapping it to Tony Romo? I don't know. Uh, the Giants lost to Mod Bradshaw, Dominic Hickson, and Martellus Quinton, the latter to the Bears. They picked up a tight end, Brandon Myers from Oakland, and drafted a tackle, Justin Pugh, uh, 19th overall in the first round from Syracuse. I'm going to sound, you know, sexy as they say. Uh, Philly, this is where it's the first one that doesn't have any major losses. I picked up Lane Johnson, drafted him from Oklahoma. Matt Barkley, Aurelius Ben, uh, uh, Tampa Bay, and uh, Philadelphia got Felix Jones. Uh, this is all kind of shocking to me. Again, like I was saying in the first video. I watch football, like most guys do religiously, but not in the off-season. When the Super Bowl is over, the next day there is no football. And there is no football until, like, today. I don't know if it's quite midnight yet. Uh, three minutes to midnight. So, from the end of the Super Bowl, or Pro Bowl, whichever's later than our Super Bowl, I'm sure now I am. Until the kickoff of the preseason, there is no football at all. Not a play, not NFL Network, nothing. No, no America's game, none of that stuff, no Super Bowl highlights, nothing. No football. They didn't even talk about football. They didn't do a video. For whatever reason, I'm back to doing it now. So, um, uh, Eagles didn't lose anybody but Riley Cooper, which may have ended up being a blessing and picked up, drafted and picked up some probable talent there, combined with what they already have, though this just in Macklin, uh, Jeremy Macklin has had surgery and I'm thinking they said the first half of the season, something like that, but with Deshaun Jackson and everybody else in the game. Could be the eight main season Philly needs. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The players very well may do that. I forgot one other guy. He's not playing. Chip Kelly. It's his style. Going to fit with the team, of course, first, and that is a question. But with the rest of the NFL, I, you know, they stick out there. 
And does he try to drive it, you know, at maybe two and four, you know, three and four, something like that? I'm trying to do it as you go back to some pro style of offense. So beyond the normal, what seems to be normal, you know, uh, things going on in, Phil in Philadelphia and scandals and whatnot going on in Philadelphia, they've got one on the field with their coach. I'm no fan of Oregon because that guy tested that ball nine yards after it was kicked. And we all know that. We all know that. I, I do Washington. They lost to Ball Brown and tackle. But got Dante Stallworth and Devery Henderson. Can't wait to talk about the Saints. It'll be just a moment. And, uh, wow. You see the trend there. And I saw a whole bunch of players where Robert Griffin had one against Philly. I sat and watched it, you know, thanks to the TV or whatever, for like 10 minutes. And how, one, how shabby the defense was both behind the line of scrimmage and downfield in the secondary and how Washington and the offense seemed to do very little and still like 50 yard touchdown. So with Stallworth and Henderson, that looks like the pieces they need. I don't know about Santana Moss. I don't think they lost more than the losses. So interesting to see what happens in the East as far as uh, Standings, the final standings at the end of this year. Not because I don't like Dallas, but I can see Dallas being the fourth place team. The game behind Philly, uh, three games behind Washington, uh, behind the Giants, 8-8 eight eight for the Giants. Six and ten, five and eleven. Right now they finished the East. Uh, Washington, anything better than ten and six? Ten and six and twelve before ten and twelve. They get in, maybe host a playoff game, host two maybe, something like that. And now on to the South, which thankfully finished in alphabetical order last year. The Falcons. Going 13 and 3, best record in the East, uh, best record overall, actually. A long time with Denver. Um, and everyone else, 79. Carolina, New Orleans, Tampa Bay. And I was talking about that too uh, in the last week's show. If you're the front runner of the division, and throughout that year, like obviously was the case here, you're Three and zero, they're one and two. You're five and one, they're two and four. Throughout the season, you've got not only a, you probably have you know, let's say a six game lead on all those guys in the division. They had a six game lead, at least. Could something be seven if they swept them, and they only won seven games. You got a six game lead in the division, but they only won seven games. So there was. It was a cakewalk throughout the whole season for Atlanta. I mean, I noticed it because at five and one, and they're two and three, or two and three, two and four, there's still a couple games out of the division. And, you know, that's the beauty of football. You're never kind of out of it, though, like these numbers say. You know, Atlanta 13 and three, the rest of the team seven and nine. No problems with any of them. Uh, let's see, Atlanta lost Kevin Cobb, John, oh, well, that's Arizona, I'm sorry. Lost Bernard Turner, uh, John Abraham, and Tyson Claybone. All three players have been to the, at least one Pro Bowl. Turner had kind of a down year last year. He only had about 800 yards rushing. And uh, they picked up Steven Jackson who toiled and earned his keep in St. Louis, three-time Pro Bowler. 
Uh, you unplug that from St. Louis, which really did need him, and I'm sure they thank him for his work. He's a great guy and all that. But you unplug that from St. Louis and plug it into Atlanta. No need to address the, uh, you know, the wideouts. They, they were fine there. The running game needed a boost, and Stephen Jackson over Michael Turner. That's 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 an upgrade. And I have any losses for Carolina either. But they got Dominic Hickson from the Giants and Ted Ian Jr. from San Francisco. Ah. Uh, Hickson could be good, but Ted Kim Jr. could be a good fit of that young, super all-college team in Carolina. Um, you know, Ted Kim Jr. kind of out of it, but kind of like uh, Greg Olson was there. Those guys that are around there, mixed with the new talent or whoever they're bringing in, that could, could might pose some problems for older you know, uh, eh, not so much Atlanta. Atlanta's all right. I've been like New Orleans. They could, could do something for them. I took the New Orleans. Not only did they lose uh, Devery Henderson, they also lost Jamal Bushrod and Chris Ivory. We talked about Chris Ivory because he obviously, I think, went to an AFC team and it had to be big where we went. Uh, I want to say. Indianapolis, but I don't have AFC screen up there, so I um, they picked up Ben Watson, who I'm not sure is still playing, but I can't believe it. So it's kind of odd to see what happens. Minus uh, Drew Brees' security blanket, plus an agent tight end. And then they don't have Dr. Chris Ivory, a uh, great back, who's got a great career coming. Uh, that's what Eagles get you young. You know, provided he stays healthy. But if he does stay healthy, then, you know, they have that running game that Drew Brees needs to suck secondaries up to hit those long passes for almost 5,000 yards. You know the stats, so. Uh, Tampa Bay lost to Jared Blunt, Dallas Park, and really is fair, I'm running off earlier. But Dallas Park's only been to one Pro Bowl. That seemed kind of odd. They've been done a few more than that. We drafted uh, quarterback Mike Lennon from North Carolina State. I know about him. Um, but no matter what, this young kid, whoever he is, to be able to sit behind Josh Freeman, who he may have played, or, you know, was probably a college together. Uh, they picked up Peyton Hills from Kansas City and drafted Mike James from Miami. So he's kind of interesting. Uh, Uh, we got Josh Stewart, you know, if Aiden Ellis can have a, you know, if somebody can resuscitate his career, didn't need LeGarrette Blunt, didn't need Dallas Clark, and could do without a really good spin. So without any major losses and a eh, name of Aiden Ellis, we can look for the same between 8-8 eight eight down to 6-10. Now on to what, surprisingly, one of the best divisions in football. The NFC West. Pardon me? Now, San Fran represented the NFC in the Super Bowl last year, the Lights Out Bowl. Uh, Seattle Came out of nowhere, uh, eight and zero at home. 
a beat up there in the Pacific Northwest. That's a hell of a place to play. Uh, I finished 11 to 5, but a half came behind San Fran, which was 11 4 and 1. And that was because St. Louis for the 7 8 and 1. And of course, time was San Francisco, the 13 all game. Arizona's 5 to 11, who cares? San, uh, St. Louis finished the season 1 0 and 1. I gotta use all the numbers because they tied. 1 0 and 1 against the 49ers. One on one. Sam Fred did not beat. Ooh, did not beat St. Louis. Lost to time. So they were eleven and three against the rest of their schedule. And oh one and one against the Rams. That just speaks to division games. You got your Jets and Cleveland's and but everybody won at least two games last year. And I would imagine there was uh, Jacksonville and all. Yeah. Yeah. Jacksonville went two and fourteen. Everybody won these four games, you gotta see. That's kind of weird. The two teams that finished 2 and 14 were the AFC Jacksonville and Kansas City. But this is what I was speaking to. Jacksonville's two wins were against the division. They were 2 and 4 against the division. Which was actually the third best record out of the four teams in there. Tennessee finished 1 and 5. Now the other team, uh, Kansas City, neither one of their wins was against the division or even the AFC. I can't remember one, but one of the course was to New Orleans when they kicked the field goal in overtime because Kansas City had led that entire game and they won on the last play. So everybody won at least two games. And though more often than not, you know. Uh, uh, two, uh, won at least two games in the division. Tennessee won one and Kansas City won uh I don't see it. Kansas City didn't win this division. Arizona and Detroit didn't either. Neither did Philly. Uh, those five teams, Arizona, Detroit, Philly, Jacksonville, Kansas City, all finished with fewer than uh, two division wins. Everybody else was at least 500 in the division. So, projected out here, I don't see any reason Atlanta loses their grip on the South. I may lose a couple of games with, you know, you know take that shit anymore from these people. And, you know, one of the three teams, of course, you would say New Orleans, then maybe Carolina and Tampa Bay. One of the three teams in that order will finish nine and seven to Atlanta's eleven to thirteen. Eleven and five on the low side, thirteen and three to the high side. Uh, anything like that. That they all won't finish seven and nine because they want to be nine and seven. The other two at Carolina and Tampa Bay look like it could be it. I know I would say Carolina gets boards up on them and, and maybe, you know, get a little traction. And at least they had 7 or 9 or 8 and 8, but just not quite enough yet. Too young talent. If that team stays together five years from now without any super additions or subtractions, you know, whatever. But not quite now. So that's that. Now for the NFC door. Been boring myself with the first half of this just to get to this. I guess I'm going to need a strong drink. Almost 30 minutes in. Let's give ourselves a minute there because I'm going to need it. 
Yeah, but I see you go. Minnesota won their last four games and finished ten and six. And Chicago won their last two games and finished ten and six too, but due to the San Francisco tie and uh, the two teams out of the East, Washington and the Giants. Going towards the end of the season, we were one of the first two teams for the second wild card. And after losing two and then winning two, but that happened and while Minnesota won four, gave them that much. I believe Minnesota beat San Fran too, so all right, that gave them the edge. Yeah, put them in there. Uh, Green Bay finished 11 and 5. Yeah, you know, fine. And we did lose one game at home. That was to San Fran in that opening 30 to 22 sal uh, salvo. Kind of showed the 49ers they could beat whoever they want, wherever they want. You go into Lambo and open the day and beat them. I don't care who you are. Things might go a little bit different as planned. You know? Maybe you have to save a few teams, but even them, you know, they've got a shot. Detroit finished four and twelve, lost the last eight in a row. So they were four and four, and after the first waypoint in the NFC North, you're four and four. Mathematically, if the season was directly had, they're two games out at the very worst. I said uh, uh, Green Bay was six and two, and uh, Minnesota and Chicago were exactly five and three, and four and four, and Detroit's four and four. They're two games out, but then they lose eight in a row. They lose eight in a row, which uh, Jacksonville lost five, Kansas City lost four. They kind of took that losing to a whole new level. They still won four games, four and twelve, so. You know, right. uh, so I start with the Bears. Erlacher retired in a cloud of controversy and bullshit. And so did Johnny Knox. And I believe it is because I don't think it was last year. It probably was last year. If not, it was definitely the year before where I. He went long for a play and God just, you know, leveled him. You can probably find the video online, but whether it was the end of last year to now or two years ago to now, he couldn't play anymore. He had to retire. That's pretty messed up. Uh, Jason Campbell's gone blue fucking blue. We picked up Martellus Bennett, uh, New Orleans, Jamar Bushrod, who I believe decided to retire instead of playing for the Bears. Hopefully because, you know, I don't know. It was probably because he figured he'd got hurt playing for the Bears. But uh, you don't want to play for a 10 or 6 team, but you play for a 7 to 9 team and rather retire. If that's not you, dude, I'm sorry if it is. It's total bitch. So. And, uh, they drafted the guard Kyle Long, 20th overall from Oregon. I snuck a look. Uh, ESPN right now has Bears cap up while they're going on. And they said about Kyle Long that he only started five games for Oregon. You know, they're going to take a chance on him or whatever. But hey, got to do something. I uh, will the end would be about the best. Detroit lost Titus Young, maybe the best thing that ever happened in football, and they picked up Reggie Bush. Okay, New Orleans, Miami, Detroit. I don't know. You know Reggie, you gotta, you know, you gotta do it somewhere. And you've done it for the most part in your places, but you have to find a place to do it. Uh, now, ah. 
The Packers driver and a Donald driver and Jeff Saturday both retired. Though I'm sure Saturday might go as a Colt. I think he might go as a Colt, but it's all said and done more than likely. Uh, Greg Jennings went to Minnesota and uh, and lost Cedric Benson. And all they picked up was Eddie Lacy from Alabama, who could do some things, but more often than not, in the NFC North, like many other running backs, is going to get his shit pushed in. He asked me have Forte, and I asked him one for Detroit. Really? He, yeah, I can't remember his name, but uh, we looked that one up too. Uh, Lift them up, ask them and what it's like going, going through it. Right next door to Green Bay Alphabet is Minnesota, who lost Percy Harvin to Seattle. And Seattle kind of gave the raw end of that deal because he's selected for surgery. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a matter of whether he wants to play or whether he wants to play. It seems like he wants to play for winners. And that's the kind of thing. These kids win their whole life in high school, and win their whole lives in college, and you get drafted to Jacksonville for that. Oh yeah. Mr. Football in Muskogee, go to Oklahoma State for two years, you know, BCS Bowls, yada yada yada. Right for Jacksonville. Kansas City. The worst team available is who you're going to be playing for. Yeah. You know, I think Percy Harvard, of course, coming out of Florida, win a tradition. But I don't think he realizes that the news that's happened at the spots he went to might have been sorting out. As far as I'm concerned. I figure now more than at any other time in the course of American history, you can speak your mind and either nobody will care or half of them will listen to it. So I'll be damned if I don't from here on out. All right. Let's see. The Bears, Lions, all forward. Well, I, as far as NFC goes, Minnesota's at the Green Bay, you know. Right there. Now, how will this season play out in the north? I have to go back to the numbers so I can love you. Uh, yeah, Green Bay was 11 and 5. Minnesota and Chicago a game behind Detroit, 7 behind. We're going to leave Detroit in the cellar, okay? We're going to leave Detroit there until you post a reason at the bottom of the page for Detroit being third or up in the NFC North. Well, they have every chance as any of the other teams of being third. Uh, you know, not trying to be too effed up about this, but, you know, they have a right as any to wild card, NFC North ground, et cetera, et cetera, but... If you lose eight in a row, you finna, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you might as well stay the solid grow. If you show me, that's fine. If you don't show me, then I was right. Now, any of the other three teams can finish anywhere else. Try to stay away from it from the other divisions and other talks, and Again, my cousin Terrence, a diehard Packer fan and resident fool, I guess you call him, but whatever. I will probably attest to that. Any one of these teams, Minnesota, Chicago, and Green Bay, has legitimate stake from hard work or defense or whatever they hang their hat on, they have a legitimate shot of winning the NFC North. And uh, the last week of the season, or by three games. 
It's as simple as that. So conversely, either one of these three teams will have that same equal stake to the third place spot. More than likely out of the playoffs, almost definitely out of the playoffs, much like the role Chicago took last year. 10 and 6, you won 63% of your games. 10 and 6. And actually, uh, through ESPN's website, those are the standards I've got up here. The Bears had the biggest plus minus 98 points to Green Bay's 97. And, uh, oh, geez, by far the fewest points allowed. This is more, I'm not trying to notice these numbers, but I'm looking at them and they're getting interesting and more interesting. Okay, first of all, again, Chicago won the plus minus, though, albeit by one point against Green Bay and their vaunted offense. Now, Green Bay did score uh, 58 points more than Chicago, but the other three teams besides Green Bay's 433 were Minnesota, 379, Chicago, 375, Detroit, 372. So there was a seven point difference in points four between Minnesota, Chicago, and Detroit. I try to tell people that these stats don't matter. The like yards per game don't matter. And that's kind of why I didn't do the overall team stats. Uh, Chicago was second to last in offense, of course, in the NFC, 15 out of 16. But the kicker in that is the top 15 teams all the way down to Chicago average at least 300 yards per game offensively. The 16th team offensively was Arizona, 700 yards behind Chicago. Chicago was on the cusp of 5,000, I think 49, 69. And uh, so, uh, Arizona was at 4,200, average 263 yards per game. Matter, uh, well, kind of not really there because Arizona finished 5-11, but you know, and overall, and, and back to the North, these stats don't matter. Jay Cutler throws for 325 yards. You know, Matt Forte runs for 100 yards. They have their best offensive game, whatever, whatever. And they turn right around. Cutler throws for 130 yards. Forte runs for 55 yards. And they win by an even wider margin. See that? These stats do not really matter. Now, points kind of do. And, uh, and I, I think by points, I mean final score. That would, of course, do. But now, uh, back to the Norse numbers. Uh, Chicago was 59 points clearer of everyone in points allowed. 277 to Green Bay is 336. Minnesota 348 and the big number was Detroit gave it up 437 points. So you know the plus and minus to me is some the wins lost definitely do the final score does but a lot of these stats, you know, Aaron Rodgers goes out there, he throws for four three to fifty yards a game. You know, whatever. A lot of the time she has to rush for 40 yards or so. And finish 11 and 5. But they were 500 team on the road. Uh, Minnesota, 7 and 1. 3 and 5 on the road. Detroit, 2 and 6 at home and on the road. But Chicago was five and three at home and on the road. These stats do not matter. You can lose twenty-two to nineteen. You can win forty-one to ten. Oh, when it's all said and done, it's going to average out. So, you know, I've said it about a few of the other divisions. You can turn it on its ear. You can leave it as it is. Either way, this one. Obviously, more than anyone, I, my heart says Chicago, of course, number one, and to hell with the other three. So that's why I think I'm going to leave it. Um, 
Right now it's a half past midnight. We're going to play a lot of pinball. A lot of pinball. Maybe post, post a few hard scores to Facebook and uh, probably not watch the Cowboys and the Dolphins. If anything, I'll be in there working with the train set or maybe enjoying a nice piece of meat somewhere. So we'll I'll probably end up watching it, you know, fast forward and through it. Definitely with all the Hall of Fame things going on. Most, if not all of the uh, preseason games were played Thursday through Sunday. So, most of that is the days I work, Thursday through Saturday. So, I think the Bears open up in Carolina Thursday the 9th. I want to have to see if there's any way I can, like, get out of there sometime before 9 or at 9 so I can get home and at least listen to the end of the second half on WBBM 780. Uh, one of the coolest things ever, you know, with the uh, direct TV system and all that, man, get any game and all that, and that's pretty cool, but before that, I had a lot of fun, and the first season was during when I uh, Cutler got hurt and they had finished eight and eight. They you know, finished one and seven from seven and one, finished eight and eight. Even that season, that was the first. I really enjoyed listening to it over the internet radio. You, know, you plug in the station WBBM 780. Uh, the bad news was listening to the news reports, you know, being that in Chicago, niggas is getting murdered left and right. But, uh, Beyond that, Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer give a tremendous call, and if I don't have the Sunday ticket plugged in for the preseason, or maybe even just for a whim, I'll, you know, black out the screen on the television here, you can see the light coming from it. That is the light, you don't go into a death. That's the light I stare at to 20 hours a day as well. That's right. Uh, you know, I'll just black out the screen, turn it off, and and listen to the radio. Sit outside and listen to the Bears game. But some I, that's how I actually started out here in Tulsa, moving from Oak Mulgee in uh, uh, July of 2000. I moved up here into uh, the Villas of Yorktown, and. Uh, I had like a clock radio and I didn't do too much with it because I heard the Super Clear Station and it was Bob Carpenter, you know, back when he was with the Cardinals doing the call for the Cardinals. So between all that, I could listen to games and all that. So I kind of got an affinity for the radio. So now that I'm able to touch Chicago from here, turn the TV off, you know, go outside and have a smoke and a beer and just listen to the game as they tell it to you. Now, of course, through the regular season, I got to go with looking at it. But if somehow, I, uh, last year, I actually had it turned off for a couple of weeks, so I had to miss it. So I tune in WBBM and go from there. It's not like I'm plugging them or anything, but if they happen to listen to this, just you, so you guys know, here in Oklahoma, I love the call. Jody Atkins there give. And I love going 26 weeks without football from February to August because it gets me revved up for 26 weeks of football. College, high school, pro, we're going to kick it off tonight. 